Hey guys, welcome to The Hot Johnson. Today we're going to talk about being a people pleaser. So if you feel like you're showing up in the world, you're putting other people before yourself, this episode is for you. Uh, Braun's going to be talking today about his kind of personal journey with being a people pleaser, people pleaser in recovery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and we're going to just kind of share... thanks to you, by the way. Oh yeah, apparently. <laughs> we're going to drop some family drama from what I hear in this episode. Right. Um, <laughs> um, and then we're also going to share some tips with how to show up in the world where you're not people pleasing. You're putting yourself first and living more authentically in a way that feels really good for you. I'm really excited about this episode because I've been saying for a while now that I am a recovering people pleaser throughout my whole life. Like right from when I was a kid, I felt like the way that I got my love, my connection, my acceptance, my approval was to appease other people and kind of bend my knees to what other people wanted of me. I think I learned right from a young age. And I think it was interesting because we were such performers as young kids mm -hmm. that we got so much of our love and approval by like putting on plays for our family. Yeah. When Bronze says performers, we used to like our, if our family members would come over, our grandparents and stuff, we would be putting on plays and songs and dances. Like I think Bronze got a background in theater. You went on to performing arts school. So yeah, by performers, we mean like acting, performing. Yeah. And we got dancing. a lot, we got a lot of love from that. And I think that that was just one of the ways where my people pleasing tendencies manifested in that I saw my family and, and people show me a lot of love when I was performing and I changed my behavior. I started performing in my actual life so that I could get the certain reaction from people mm -hmm. that would make me feel good, that would make me feel loved and approved of. Mm -hmm. I think that's very common for people when you are especially younger and you see a certain behavior gets you love, attention and validation. It's like, OK, I guess this is how I'm supposed to be. And maybe it might be a way that doesn't feel authentic. But if that's what the world is enforcing is the way to get love, then it makes sense that you're going to show up that way. Totally. And we're all subject to this, right? Right from when we're a young age. We're brought up in a world where we learn if we're good or bad by what the people, our parents, our, our family around us say about us. When we do something good, we're a good girl or a good boy and vice versa. When we do something bad, we are a bad girl, bad boy. And therefore, we learn to bend our authenticity, bend our way of being in the world to get that love, get that approval from our parents. Mm -hmm. And so right from when we're born, we start getting domesticated into this way of being where we stop being ourselves and start performing to mm -hmm. to get that safety, to get that yeah. love from the people around us. Yeah, it's like, what mask did you learn to put on at a young age to get that approval? That's right. Yeah. Can you relate to that at all? <laughs> you think? <laughs> um, question for you. Yes. We're all just going through the world, navigating it. How would someone actually know if they are a people pleaser? That's a really good question. I think that deep down we have a sense of resonance. And I really like that word resonance with what feels true to us, with what feels authentic. And that's really what it means to be authentic, to be honest with yourself, to be honest with the lifestyle you want to create, to be honest with your interactions and the way you communicate and also the way you take action in the world to make sure that's in alignment with what you say you're going to do as well. You know when you're being inauthentic if your actions or your words feel out of alignment with your true. Mm -hmm. And that comes down to a feeling of resonance within. Yeah, it's like when someone asks you to do something and you're like, okay, sure. But then on the inside, you're like, I want to freaking do this. I'm burnt out. I'd rather just stay home and eat pizza and watch TV. Yeah. But you, you feel you like you night. have to show up. Yeah, me a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> As me. Okay, so yeah, what about you? What's your journey with uh, being a people pleaser been like? I honestly didn't even know you were a recovering, struggling people pleaser. This is this is a relatively new disclosure. Oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, I think it started off when we were kids and I always wanted to get your love and approval because, you know, you were older than me. And you meant so much to me. I looked up to you in such a big way. And when your friends would come over, I would always want to play with you guys. I was also attracted to a lot of your girlfriends too. Yeah, and my so, friends are hot. Yeah. You're welcome. I think you dated a few of them. <laughs> that was way, that was later in life. But <laughs> I remember too, I would come into your guys' room and I would like bring you water and like snacks and shit like really? that. And you would be like literally good boy. 
And so that's, I think, where it's. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little slave brawn. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Oh. Yeah. So I learned that if I was to act a certain way in the world, that that was how I got love. And it was by showing up, being a good boy, doing things for other people. And making people laugh, saying yes to things when it's really a no, or when I dampen my honest expression in any given moment, because I think that if I do say what's honest within me, that I'm going to get shamed for it, or I'll be perceived as someone who is dumb or cringe or whatever, you Mm -hmm. know, just any kind of negative perception. And so we alter, we edit the way we express ourselves in the world in order to get the reaction from other people that we think that we want from them. Yeah. Yeah. And so how did that play out for you? Like in what major areas of your life did you feel yourself editing yourself to get that love and acceptance from other people? Yeah. In the biggest way, definitely through my romantic relationships. I thought that all throughout my late teens, early 20s, and even mid to late 20s too, I had this deep feeling of not being enough for women that came from you know really shitty experience when I was a kid being rejected by girls but I had this perception that in order to get connection love approval and ultimately a girlfriend or sex I had to change who I was Mm. yeah and so many men especially can relate to this and I'm sure women too but for a lot of men we feel like that in order to get the love and connection from women, we have to change who we are. It's bringing to mind the book. Uh, Have you read No More Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah, yeah. I haven't read it, but I've just heard so many men talk about it, talk about it, specifically with what you're speaking to of your experience of this, like feeling like you had to show up in a certain way. Do you feel like you were showing up as the nice guy or? Oh, big time. Yeah, at the beginning, especially. But then I learned how to be more dominant in my life. I learned how to be more confident and less needy. And I think for a lot of people too, when they hear of navigating away from people pleasing, they start talking about starting to own your boundaries more and start owning what you really want in the world and who you really are and stop caring so much about what other people think. And some people go to the other side of the scale, which is like dipping into narcissism, where you stop caring at all about what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. The key is to get into a place where you are still caring about what other people think, but not more than what you think of yourself and what you want. Mm -hmm. And so I started learning how to do that in the world, but there was always still a little piece of me that was unsure of myself. And that definitely also manifested in my professional life as well. I always thought that in order to be a life coach, in order to help people, I had to be exactly like the people that helped me the most. Eckhart Tolle or Tony Robbins, I always had this perception that in order to be the coach and the speaker that I wanted to be, that I couldn't be me. Mm -hmm. I had to be like them, right? which was obviously so incredibly inaccurate and wrong. Yeah, it's so unfortunate. And I think it is super common. Like, I think a lot of us think that way. And it's so often when you hear a lot of artists, musicians and stuff talk about the same thing. Like they, you know, were trying to follow in the footsteps of their favorite artists as they were coming up in the music game. But it wasn't until they fully just owned who they are 100 percent. Like I think Sam Smith talked about this Uh, and with him, it was more his body. Right. He was like, once I stopped dieting and trying to eat, I just owned my body. That was when he really exceeded and did really well in the music industry because it also probably showed up in the way he was writing and performing and all the things. When we are living in a way that's not authentic, we're, we're cut off from our true expression. And it's the most beautiful thing to see somebody connected to their pure essence and to be showing up in the world from that place where they're just like, you know, this is who I am. If you don't like me... Too bad, because I really like me. Totally. And I think that a lot of the times we need to be connecting with a coach, counselor, therapist in order to process a lot of this, because a lot of our shame triggers, like the reason why people are people pleasing and aren't showing up authentically in the world is because they think that if they do, they won't be loved for it. It brings to mind what Gabor Mate talks about, about the two core human desires. Mm -hmm. The first one being the desire for authentic expression to show up in the world who you are to communicate it 
who you are authentically. Yeah. The second one being the need for human connection. And he talks about if there is a fear that by you expressing authentically could block you from receiving human connection, then oftentimes what goes is that authentic expression of yourself. Yeah. Because it That'll is, get jeopardized. Yeah. We'll sacrifice our authenticity in order to get connection. Exactly. I'm really happy you brought that up. That's yeah. an, so important. It just makes so much sense to me. And I, I hear so many people talking about exactly this, like wishing that they could show up. And especially I think social media is such a good one because it is a place where we all have like our own little mini stage of like, how do you want to express yourself in the world? And it's true. I don't know about you, but from, you know, my 20 years of being in radio and broadcasting and being out there, when you authentically express yourself it is guaranteed there are always going to be people who don't like you don't agree you know probably don't like this podcast and that is fine but that's hard for a lot of us to to feel and to be with and accept because we are literally hardwired at our core to need human love and acceptance when we were babies we needed that from our parents back in ancestral times we needed our tribes to you know include us for survival so that is deeply hardwired into our nervous systems our dna to to want and to need that and in order to uncover that and heal that properly a lot of the times we need to work with someone on a professional level. So yeah, if we start talking a little bit about how to evolve this, how to heal it, just going off of what you just spoke of. Yes, working with, you know, support is always helpful. I would personally love to share how I've navigated this. I think for me, you know, when you're showing up on social media or anywhere for that matter in the world where you're worried about people not liking you, you know, public speaking is a big one. It's like the number one fear, even above death. Mm -hmm. And I think that really hits on it because <laughs> it is ultimately you sharing, sharing your authentic self, putting yourself on a platter or a stage and subjecting yourself to rejection from other people. Absolutely. So for me, how I've navigated that is like, First of all, really working on your relationship with yourself where you feel really just good with the human that you are. Mm -hmm. And so when you show up in the world and say things, your own opinion of yourself means more than the opinion of other people. Yes. Now when I show up and, you know, whether it's this podcast, wherever, and speak about things that feel vulnerable and authentic... I still, after 20 years of doing this, have that panic feeling sometimes of like, oh my God, people are going to judge me. They're not going to like me. But the difference is, is I just do it anyways. Right. And I sit with the emotions. It's like just a practice of like breathing. Those anxious feelings are going to come up in your body, but telling yourself in that moment, like, I care more about my own opinion than the opinions of other people. And ultimately their thoughts about me are not really true. Like their thoughts are their projections of you. Yeah. Projections of, of you from the current emotional state that they're in. Yeah. So if someone is in a negative state in their life, they're, whether you're phenomenal at what you do, it doesn't really matter. They're still going to see you and think thoughts about you or even write things about you from that negative state. A hundred percent. And so it's people, never personal. It has nothing to do with you. It's exactly. It's never personal. They don't know you. They're coming from their own belief of who you are, which is not in reality. Oftentimes people get triggered for one reason or another with you just showing up authentically in the world. Yeah. It's like, yeah, really just seeing that it's, it's their shit and yeah. not yours yeah. and caring more about your own opinion. Why would you care more about a stranger's opinion than your own yes. about yourself? Yeah. And I think that's really the work is like learning to build that relationship with yourself where yourself your opinions are more important. And going back to what we started talking about at the beginning of this podcast, putting other people before yourself. Yeah. That's ultimately what this is, right? Is it's learning to put yourself higher on the hierarchy list. Yes, exactly. And we all have those moments where we act or speak out into the world inauthentically. And I think what I want people to take away from this podcast is start practicing catching yourself in those moments. Stop and ask yourself, what do I really want right now? What do I really want to say? What's actually my truth? And how can I say that in a way where I'm owning it 
yeah, my truth might disappoint someone. Yeah, my truth might hurt someone even, but it is not worth jeopardizing your integrity for. And that's something we all have to practice. And I think in order to start being that and doing that, we really have to start acknowledging when we're not that so that we can shift it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So aside from what you just said, are there any other things for you personally that have helped you not be a people pleaser? Well, I think that it comes down to three fundamental things. And the first one is acknowledging the kind of life that you want to live. Like if you want to stop being a people pleaser, it means that you're saying yes and appeasing other people's agendas before your own. Yeah. So in order to stop being a people pleaser, you need to acknowledge your boundaries of what you, what you really want in the world and what you don't want and sticking to that. Mm -hmm. In fact, a practice that you can do is to make a list. This is how you create boundaries, right? Grab a piece of paper, write a line down the middle and on, on the left say, what do I want? or what is okay, and on the right say what I don't want and what is not okay. And you can write out your boundaries for any person, any situation, any circumstance in your life. That's one practice to start looking at what do I actually value in the world and being able to own that. That's like the first way to stop being a people pleaser so you can start living a more authentic life. And the second way is taking like authentic action in the world doing what you say you're going to do. If you have an impulse to go and move on something, go out and do it. So it's not just acknowledging your boundaries and your values and what you want in the world, but actually having the courage to take action on it as well. So with number two, you would have potentially stopped yourself from actually going out and doing the thing over fear of people's opinions of it. Correct. Right. Yeah. So you need to start taking action and accepting that some people might not like what you actually want to do in the world. Right. You need to, like you said, value your own opinion of what you want and who you are over other people. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is easier said than done. And that's where for me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, I'm just saying. And so I think that's where, like, like I said, after 20 years of doing it, that still comes up, that feeling still comes up for me. So I think a huge, huge component is that sitting with just sitting with the feeling, knowing it's going to come up, but sitting with it, accepting it. Totally. Totally. And I think to perhaps add to that, isn't it true though, that when you do you, and I'm talking about you specifically, and even me too, when you've shown up in the world in that authentic way, you also do get a lot of love and approval from other people because because they see the value in it. Well, that's the thing, you know, (laughs) there's like all these accounts and people online who speak very authentically. Just, I follow a few accounts where they just like talk about things from a very blunt, honest perspective. And they do have a huge following because I I think especially, and that's a huge reason why I do like talking about the real shit. I always have, because to me, social media is so much, it is a people pleaser world. We're all showing up trying to like show everyone how great our lives are, how successful we're in love. We look good. It's like the, the highlight reel. And to me, that's just like, ugh. like I don't want to live in that world. We all have our shit. So let's just be real about it. And I think people are craving as social media and like this perfectionism has become more rampant. We're just like craving some authenticity, some real reality. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, What was the third one? The third one is being able to speak your truth. So there's acknowledging. First one is acknowledging. Second one is taking action on what you've acknowledged is true for you. And the third one is being able to communicate accurately what you mean, to Mm -hmm. say what you mean and to mean what you say. Mm -hmm. And I think that this takes the skill set of learning how to look at what you're feeling in your body and what you're thinking and being able to communicate that into words in a way that people can hear you and understand you. Makes you be able to take what's real inside you and have it be known by another person. Right, which can be very scary. Mm -hmm. to express those things if you haven't. Yes. And also oftentimes people in your life are not going to like it. If all of a sudden, you know, you've gone your whole life being with people pleaser and all of a sudden you're communicating boundaries and I don't want to do that. You might get some reactions from people and that's okay. That's on them to manage their feelings. Yeah. There's no doubt that it's going to be uncomfortable to start practicing this. But when we do, the payoff is our sense of freedom. Yeah. It's our sense of liberation. Yeah. It's our sense of 
being able to take off the mask of who we thought we needed to be in order to get love and approval from the outside world yeah. and finally get it where it can only be found consistently anyway, which is within. Yeah. How does Braun 2.0 in his non-people pleasing era, how are you showing up in the world differently? Yeah, I still think that I do have a little bit of fear of showing up and this is just me being real i still do have some wounding around showing up authentically especially on social media throughout my 20s the way i showed up was i mean on hindsight pretty cringe because i was trying to get love and approval from people and i didn't know that at the time but that was a big way of how i showed up and that manifested in having a lot of failure in business losing connections that i thought at the time were really valuable to me like friends so I do still have some wounding around there of, of showing up authentically online. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question, it's to have this conversation, to actually be able to speak that out loud. Uh, it's something that I'm working with my coach on right now as well. And so we're always in a process of healing. Like we're never going to be in a place where we are 100% ourselves 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. We can get really close, but there's always going to be a time in life where we might get triggered into that old habit of like self-protection or editing or suppressing our truth because we're scared of the effect it might have on the world and the effect it might have on us. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's a process. It's a practice. Yeah. I think it's like that with any core wound that anybody has, whether it's people pleasing, struggles with body image, it's we're as humans, the healing is never ending. If you choose to want to go down that path, there's always different layers. Things can get re-triggered. Totally. Yeah. But what I always say to people that I'm working with, like my clients, I say, as you go through this process, there's two variables in which you can measure your progress. And one is frequency. So how often am I people pleasing? Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the better you get at this, the less frequent you will people please, mm -hmm. right? And the second measurement is the intensity of the emotional reaction, right? That you have yeah. when you put those boundaries in place. Or when you don't put the boundaries in place and give in to the people pleasing tendency, yep. how negative does that feel? And yep. how long will it feel negative for? Yeah. So the more you own your shit and what you want and who you are in the world... And accept that some people won't like it and some people will. And at the end of the day, it won't have anything to do with you. The frequency in which you feel those negative emotions and the intensity of what, in which you will feel them goes down. So does this mean you're not going to be bringing me water anymore? Correct. <laughs> I am not your slave. <gasps> Newsflash. I'm my own man. <laughs> I don't feel like you brought me water anymore anyways. I'm just funny because I just acted like Jim Carrey there. <laughs> you always have. Yeah. He's the best. Okay, I think it's time for the hot offer. Mm. Uh, Baron Johnson, what should our hot offer be this week? The hot offer is something that we kind of already addressed, but let's really nail it on the head. The next time you feel yourself going into any kind of people-pleasing, appeasing tendency in which you are jeopardizing your integrity, you're saying yes when you really mean no, you catch yourself doing something that is out of alignment with what your truth is, or you're saying something that doesn't feel authentic, the hot offer is to stop or at least catch yourself, at least be aware of it. Because when you start being aware of it, and now that you've watched this video, you'll really be aware of it. You'll recognize and acknowledge all of the times throughout your life where you're like, oh, wow, that was not real. That was not the real me. That was inauthentic. Yeah. So to stop yourself. And the second step is to just ask yourself, OK, if that's not my truth, what is? Very, very simple, but potentially life-changing if you start to practice and shifting that. Mm -hmm. And how good would it feel to like just be owning what you really want, showing up every day with your interactions with people online, in person, where you're like, yeah, this is me. This is what I want. I'm just going to fucking own it. I think another thing to add to this is that in order to be more authentic in life, we need to open up our hearts. Because when we are actually living our truth, we're living from a place of openness in our expression right here and in our gut. A lot of people are just living life reactive in the head. And in order to start actually living life in a way you're fulfilled, you have to have start having the courage to open up to what's in here. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in this week. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, by the way, I'm proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. 
Appreciate awesome. it. Yeah. Thanks. It's good to hear your experience and I'm excited for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of you out there. Much love, everybody. Yeah. See you next week. Bye-bye.